they revolutionized the Punjabi music globally. They've pushed the boundaries of South Asian representation. We know the music, but we don't know the brown mundays behind it. I am so thrilled to have you on Mirchi with us. Hi, AP. Hi, Shinda. It's Hi. an honor. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank Glad you. to be here. You know, so many surprises for your fans all at once. There is this special which is coming up. These special performances, you show up in Delhi, you show up in Mumbai. This visit looks very interesting. Now, can you just, before we start and get into other things, how has this visit been so far? What are the main highlights? No, it's been amazing. Delhi, we went to a, a, a club, like a slush lounge. Honestly, like the love we got, it was amazing. We went to the college and I had a blast. I had a blast. I literally, like, these guys were like, so good, I went in the crowd. I was just like, yo, I want to be with my fans. And it was amazing. You were smiling through. I could see that <laughs> all the pictures throughout, there was this biggest smile that we've ever seen while you were performing in Delhi and your fans. Shinda, how was it for you just to realize that people are remembering you, they know you at the first sight of you? It's always amazing to see how people look for the instances where they can see you. Yeah. So it's always good when you interact with them and you're personally close to them, even jumped into the crowd yeah. just to feel the love they have for them. And it's always amazing seeing uh, and being around people. Barriers were broken and we are thrilled that you guys are here. Mm -hmm. But you know, one line that I, if I have to pick from the docu-series where you say that if we don't bring each other up, yeah. who else will? 100%. Mm -hmm. Your songs, the way you have been with your fans, yeah. It clearly shows that you stand by this. And yesterday, what we saw during your screening, yeah. the solidarity that was there. Mm -hmm. There was Bacha, there was King, all these artists in their own might, standing shoulder to shoulder with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaks a lot about that solidarity. No, 100%. And I, I'm really grateful and I'm, I'm so happy that, uh, like, you know, they came to support me. And that's why we make music, is to bring people together. So and like, you know, help each other. I think music is such a big part in our lives. So it impacts, like, you know, when we listen to certain kind of music, when we start our day with it, it's just like, that's how our day goes, right? So that it's, it's important. Right? So it's safe to say that we are treating you well. <laughs> Mumbai is being great. Mumbai's yeah. always been great. And Hopefully, it will be great always. So, are you guys also food buddies? Because from what I saw in the docu series, you guys like are a dream team. You work together. You live together. <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, like you know, food is just so big in our culture, and like we just love food. So, <laughs> <laughs> so whenever we can, we cook. It's very therapeutic, to be honest. You know, so like yes. in a busy life, you have so many things going on in your like headspace and like. When you're cooking, you're just in it. That's so. true, that's true. You know, if I have to come back to the docu-series now, when people will watch it, they'll realize that you guys already know that you became too big too soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're very <laughs> well aware of that, right? And this, when people were loving you, they were loving your music, there was this era of, you know, mystery around you. And there's no interviews, AP. I want to ask about this. Was this like a well thought of strategy or something which just happened? No. It it wasn't like a strategy or anything like that. I feel like we just wanted to, when I started making music, there was a lot of toxic stuff was happening already. Yeah. Like between artists, this, that, like, you know, but we wanted to just keep it to the music and that's it. Like, you know, it's all about music. It's not about like my personal life, anything like that. Just, just listen to music. <laughs> yeah, true. You're one of those very rare artists, and I always say that on my show, and people in Mirchi know this, that you are actually known for the art and artist. People mm -hmm. know you for your music, yeah. which is beautiful. Yeah, sure. I want to come to Brown Monday at first. Mm -hmm. That's the song from where it all started for you guys. Yeah. While we were watching, I was watching the docuseries, and I, I could see, I could sense that even when you were putting that song out, you guys knew that this song will hit different. Like, not to this extent, you know, even with like, it just, we, at the end of the day, we just, like, we put same effort on every single track, right? So it's like, but people just love that track and it has more meaning behind it. And especially even with the visuals, we just wanted to represent our people. And I feel like people really felt it and like, you know, and like, who doesn't want to just 
say that like I'm brown and this is cool I want to play this yeah. you made yeah. looking brown very very cool <laughs> thank you so much for that it's, it's a sense of uh, being proud that we wanted to convey through Brown Monday yeah. that's the reason we even in the video we had uh, multiple acts who were doing really good in the music industry the industry we were in and they were in the video just as an appreciation for them doing really good and what they did mm -hmm. so it was a sense of making fe people feel proud of being brown and uh, doing whatever they're doing and uh, just keeping it up. But uh, you know, even in the docu-series you've spoken about it, um, you're completely an independent act. It's almost like a startup. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> you never knew what that was, but it's kind of a kind of a startup, yeah. All of you, like even those two guys, all of you, it was looking like it's a startup trying to figure out how to make things out of each other. Mm -hmm. But you were forced to be independent. So, AP, what yes. do you want to talk about that? It's just like we, you know, I feel like uh, the sound that we wanted to make great, it was too new for this side of the world. And, and even the other side of the world was just like, you know, like brown people don't have their shit together. Like they, they didn't look at us in a right way. So it's just like, I feel like we're like, okay, like we can't just give up, you know? And me, it's just like, if I want to do something, I'm gonna like do it, I'm gonna get it done. Like I can't go to bed, like knowing that I can't achieve that thing. So it's like, I was just like, okay. So I spent like almost a year, year and a half, you know, trying to like figure out the sound, trying to figure out how to put mixes together. You know, I was working at a Best Buy or convenience stores or gas stations, saving money and trying to like, you know, buy small equipment and upgrade it, like the little mics and this and that. Um, um, we, we, we didn't even have money to go to like a studio, actual, actual proper studio. So like, I, I remember I can't even buy acoustic panels or anything like that. So I was just like, okay, what do we do? We, like, I was just like, okay, uh, I built a little little room in my garage and we, we, we bought like, you know, uh, insulation that you put in the wall and we, we put that and we made it happen, right? At the end of the day, it's just like, it took a lot of time and then on like, and same thing goes with Shinda, even though we didn't met at that time while we were like, while I was doing all this, you know, I think I met him maybe a year in after. But on it, like, you know, each person like had their own struggle. Like, you know, even like him, he was doing his own jobs, like, you know, like construction jobs or whatever. And then, but you know, he, he's still like writing music um, for like, that's dope. you know, and then, and, and then like, I feel like everything happened was happened not by chance. And, you know, uh, so I brought some skill, he brought some skill, some other guys brought their skills and like, we just started making music, right? So, but it didn't happen overnight. Like there's, there's, there's years of frustrated, like, like there's always not like a, you know, you just don't go to studio and there's always bangers comes out Obviously, of it, right? Obviously, I mean, if so, you had a studio in the first place, you always wanted to be a musician. I was, honestly, I was also like kind of forced because, not forced, I would say, but like, you know, we were sitting one day and we were talking with one of my friends and like, and, and, and it was just like, oh, we were just talking about life in general. And it's just like, what do we, what, what do we create that, that's gonna stay behind? We all gonna die. No, he says that we all gonna die. I was like, yeah, that's a fucking universal truth. Yeah, <laughs> what's, what's new about it? But it's like, what we leave behind? And couldn't find one thing. I was just sitting thinking and the one thing was like, okay, if we make, I was just like, okay, I gotta make music. Like, you know, something that, that, that you leave behind for the people. So I feel like that's just, that was always the goal behind it. It's just like creating something that has meaning more than like, you know, yourself. I You've guess. outdone yourself. You've mm -hmm. truly outdone mm -hmm. yourself. And this, you know, everyone listening to me, watching me is like a dream unfolding in front of us, <laughs> like dream that big and those dreams can come true. Yeah. I want to talk to you about your writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, your sound is extremely international, the beats are way hip, but as we say like Dil and Dhadkan of a song, it's yeah. purely Desi. Mm -hmm. And uh, docu-series, there's this snap of Nusrat Sahab. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk to you about... You I, I, I used to listen to him a lot, like I grew up listening. Like, 
our even his house is right next to the border Pakistan yeah. border mm -hmm. okay. um, and mine is like you know we're the Maja Belt of Punjab yeah. it's the same belt so you've also been inspired by Nusrat Sa 100% we all have but like I feel like we music. yeah like yeah. all of us like listen I mean it's hard mm -hmm. I don't think so. I'll find one person who just like you. Know, <laughs> I don't know that guy. Like you know, he's a legend. So. But yeah. there's the Sufiness in your songs, guys. And uh, you've spoken that your father is a fan of Sufi music. Yeah, he he is. He, so he who were your early inspirations, if I have to ask? You know, all, all sort of good music. Like you know, like again, Nusra is one of them. Talla Khan is another one. There's there's so many good artists. When I was young, like yes. Coming back to your lyrics, Shinda. Um, you realize that only 2.4% people speak Punjabi. <laughs> but your songs have broken beyond that. Mm -hmm. You are that story that, as I said, too good to be true. You can go the complex route and um, write a lot of stuff. But writing simpler stuff is uh, it's, it's really hard if you, if you try. And then when you are able to achieve that, it resonates with people because there's many more people who understand that who relate to it and who play that on a daily basis. So it's, 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 a, it's a line that once you start going, you, you figure it out and then you keep on, you know. And just to it. add on him, it's just like, music is more, it's less about like a language. And it's more or a feeling. It's just a feeling yeah. and like, you know, sometimes you listen to the music, you don't even understand what they're saying, but if it feels good, mm -hmm. you vibe with it, it's good music. So I just wanted to tell you, compliment you basically, that mm -hmm. you know, you guys are the peacemakers. Uh, I can put four people in a room and they can fight about what song to listen to, what song to listen to. Mm -hmm. Between me and my friends, anyone can also tell me that, no, yeah, not Punjabi. But yeah, okay, let's play AP. Yeah. <laughs> you have actually crossed that barrier. Yeah, it's just, uh, thank, you. thank you, thank you. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know. I, I meet so many people, like in Canada, States. Um, even in the UK, or I get so many messages just like, you know, we, we never really like or listen to Punjabi music, but because of you guys, like, you know, we're into it. We're, we're starting to connect back to our culture. And I feel like that just keep, keep motivating us to do more and more, yeah. Everyone who will watch the docu-series, <laughs> they will relate to you, they will feel you, they will feel that pressure mm -hmm. of you going on that stage and performing live. Those yeah. live acts, they speak volumes for any artist. Yeah. You have done record-breaking arena shows. Yeah. And a live performance teaches an artist like nothing else does, mm -hmm. right? So what have been the learnings for you as an artist, the growth you have seen in your music maybe after experiencing live firsthand? I feel like we just didn't know what to expect, right? And it was just doing something for first time. And we tried our best to put our best show to our ability at that time. I feel like moving forward, we learned a lot and we're gonna do more and better, that's what I would say. But like, it's just, it, there was a lot to learn, right? It's, and again, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. Right. You gotta do it in order to learn it. It doesn't just come, it to, come to you, right? So, but I'm looking forward for our next tour. Whenever it happens, that we will we'll actually put a lot more thought and whatever we learned in the past, on, like, you know, run, uh, we'll apply that and make it like, Ten times better. Absolutely love the war cry before every or pre uh, show ritual, which was like Brown Monday. That was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a thing that you still continue? Yes, we do. We do. We just like, you know, hype each other up. It's just like sometimes it's not easy to go in front of uh, that many people, you know. So just like you're just with your brothers, you're just cheering. Um, it's like a little, little thing that we have. <laughs> So just, um, I'll wrap this up. And uh, last question that I would want to ask you, uh, yes. just two things. A, because you're in Mumbai, and I know you have very limited social media activity, but I see that you follow <laughs> some people like here and there out of Bollywood. I see you follow Karan Johar. Yeah. Uh, like, do you know him? Do you watch his movies? Are you a Bollywood fan? See, I feel like pretty much everyone in India grew up, you listened to, or you watched, sorry, um, Bollywood movies. That's just given. Um, and. I mean, I, I know a lot of them personally, um, like Karan Johar or like, you know, Shah Rukh, Salman, like, I know all of them like personal, on a personal level, just good human beings. So, yeah, like, you know. 
Same. So we're in the same boat, all of us then. <laughs> Just admirers of the pop culture and you being the flag bearer of it for the entire generation. One message or uh, for all the listeners and viewers of Mirchi, everyone who's just, every aspiring artist and the from you, definitely. You That's know, they so might have that unfinished song <laughs> they never released. Maybe if you speak to them directly, they, they feel that courage to release that song out there. We'll finish the song, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that was it. all. Thank you so much. You gotta much, go JP. long ways. You gotta just, you know, keep up doing what you do and uh, do your best. That's about it. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. You've been such you. a sport. It's, it's Thank you so much. Yeah.